In this video, I'm gonna continue talking about workflow for life cycle of initiatives that I presented in one of the previous videos, but this time I'm gonna focus on automations. And automations are a Jira feature that allows us to automate a lot of manual, time-consuming and error-prone activities and basically make sure that they are always performed without error and on time when we exactly need them. This video is part of our efforts to provide you best possible training around Jira, Confluence and whole Atlassian ecosystem. If you would like to support us, like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment below if you have any questions and remember that you can always reach out to us for one of our paid services like training, consultations or implementations. Okay, so let's take a quick look at our workflow. Uh, so as you remember, this one is for the life cycle of initiatives. So we have everything from, from just the idea, idea approval to the go, no go decision and then the planning and delivery of initiative. Now, what we'll be focusing on this video is this part between the scoring and go, no go decision. In this workflow, there is pretty standardized scoring for initiatives, right? So we have specific attributes, specific uh, perspectives from which we want to look at initiative and score it by so that when making the decision whether we should start the project or maybe ignore this idea, we have a common and consistent score that allows us to look whether initiative is worth pursuing or not. So this scoring is a thing that was automated over here. So let's have a look how it will look like. So currently we are in the scoring status and if we'll go to send to board, you'll see that we'll get transition screen. This transition screen contains of four fields that allows us to select the value from one, from zero to, to three. So basically what happens is based on these values, that are selected over here, the score will be automatically calculated. So we basically have three main, main perspectives by which we want to score the project. This is impact on business and innovation goals, project reach, so how, uh, how many teams are affected, uh, risk of not doing the project and value to the customer. Right? So we select from one to, uh, from zero to three. And when that is done, we send it to the board and the board already have a possibility of looking at the overall score because uh, when you'll see over here, we have separate field that is called overall score. It is calculated based on the values that we selected. Okay, but how is this calculated? So you can see over here, the fields that are taken into consideration when calculation is performed. So we have the values that we've just set, but for each of these values, there is also a weight, which tells us how specific perspective and how specific score uh, is important. So you can see that the risk of not doing the project is way more important than the impact on business or innovation goals, right? So this is basically weight. And normally this is not visible nor editable for a normal user. I've just pulled it in onto the screen so we can see it. But basically this number is multiplied by this and later divided by 100 to, to get this overall score. Okay, so the idea is good. This is done automatically, so we are not afraid that someone makes a error in calculation or that someone that forgets to do that because we can set so that on the transition we have to provide these values and automation will always be able or will always calculate this thing. So we would see that if I change the values over here, the overall score also gets updated. Okay, but I'm talking about the automations, but what are these actually? So if we'll go into the project settings, there is a separate section for automation. I will have quite a lot of them here, I think, uh, but only one is interesting. Oh no, actually I have only this project scoring. So if you click on this, you can see that it's basically pretty easy interface that allows us to decide what happens when. 
So we have so-called trigger. We are defining that uh, this automation will be run when specific fields are updated. So we have this drop-down fields here selected that were uh, selected on the or that we set the value on the transition. Uh, and by the way, there is no wait over here, no wait field, because they are already preset. There are there is default values on them. Uh, user never updates them. User never modifies them. So there's no point in uh, in putting them over here. Then we're checking if the fields, the ones that we're selecting here, are not empty. Why we're doing that? Because when we are selecting the value on the first of these fields, uh, and the rest of them is empty, not yet filled, we do not really want to run, run this automation because it will not come up with a solid number. Uh, we want this automation to be run when all the fields are filled. So when that is done, so these are basically uh, checks whether we should run the automations or not, automation or not. And when these checks are passed, we can go over here and there is basically uh, a rule for calculating this the, the overall scored number. I won't be going into the details of this, but you can basically say, see that I am just multiplying two fields and yeah, this is this is calculation specific for this particular rule. I'm sure that if you'll try to do automations, you'll have way, way different things. So I won't go into detail through that. So this is just one example, right? We are automatically calculating overall score and yeah, we are avoiding risk of doing this incorrectly or forgetting about this. But you can see already that that kind of automations, and I will return to list and just uh, show you how, how this rule is created. They can be applied to a lot of different cases. So we can have a lot of triggers. So field value change, this is the trigger that we used in our automation. Maybe we want to ru run something, is issue assigned? Maybe if a comment is added. Maybe if issue is created. So there is quite a lot of possibility of selecting what is the trigger. Uh, and when we do that, I'll just pick a random one. Uh, we are able also to define conditions. We've seen that actions maybe there are no conditions it should be run always when the trigger is done but also there is so-called branching uh, so we can decide for example that we do not want to perform operation on this particular issue but on the subtasks of this issue uh, so you can see that this is pretty pretty powerful tool uh, and it, it's not that hard to use most of the automations won't really need any coding. Everything can be just, you know, selected from the drop downs and via this uh, wizard, so to say. So this gives us quite a lot of possibilities. Maybe you have a, a value, the number field on the subtask that you want to sum up to the parent. Maybe, you know, there is cost field on the subtask that you want to see the summary of a cost on the parent. You can do that using automations when, for example, subtasks are closed. Maybe you have a net cost and you want to calculate the total cost with tax added. You can do that by using automation. Just multiply uh, the net cost and include the tax in it. All of this can be done with automations. In automations, in our case, automation is meant to simplify and make the a whole initiative lifecycle process easier, smoother, and basically allows us to avoid a lot of unnecessary work that normally would have to be done before decision is made. Okay, that will be it for this video. Hope you find it useful. If you have any doubts or questions whether you can handle something with automation or maybe how you should do that, reach out to us. Uh, we've done that quite quite a lot of times, so we have experience with it. I'm sure we'll be able to help. And for now, thanks for watching this video and see you in the next one.